Like to join us? We'd love to have you. Friday, August 4th at Victory Sports Park in Northridgeville. We're bringing Incubus to town. Bush, live, filter. The Patrick Brothers from Bay Village, Ohio. Welshley Arms. The Kaleidoscope Kid, Winona Fighter. Tickets, info, everything else at buzzardfest.com. Come along with us, won't you? A caller 10. These are yours. Good luck. 216 578 or 800 348 His first marriage didn't work out. He caught her texting another show. Sounds like he deserved it. It's Alan Cox. On 100.7 WMMS. Guardians baseball tonight, 6-10 is the start. The Detroit Tigers in town. So we'll slip out a little early. We're on 6 o'clock. Make way for Guardians baseball. Remember, as this month continues, you can use the promo code POOF, P-W-F, for 20% off at CLE Clothing Company. I don't know why I think it's further in the month than it is. We're only a week in. Today's May the 8th. By my math, by this calendar I'm looking at. And um, so all month long, you can use the promo code POOF. If you find yourself in one of CLE Clothing stores, just use it when you check out. Uh, if you want to shop online, you can do that as well. ClevelandClothing.com, just uh, type POOF in as your promo code. And you'll get 20% off no matter how many times you use it all month. There's not a maximum. There's not a minimum Let's say you went in and you're like, wow, um, I really like this because uh, they've got a million things. It's not just shirts and jackets and things. Uh, you go, oh, I, I, I need a new can koozie. That's what the kids are calling them, right? Koozies. So we used to call our girlfriends back in the day. Nevertheless, uh, you go, oh, I, my, my total comes to $7 and some change. You get 20% off that. Simply no way to know how much that would be, but uh, uh, there it is. Poof is your promo code at uh, Cleveland Clothing. Hey, Susan. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Pound takes wrong about having, we have the right to bear arms. We actually have the right to bear arms for a well-regulated, well-regulated state militia. Because if there are any problems in Cleveland, you would have to send a horse or a train to go get help because you didn't have phones or cell phones. Or well, the, the, issue, the issue is it has been interpreted for many, many decades now as the individual right. That's how it's been interpreted. Um how you know you're not well, you're wrong, but you well, might not have the gun company. And, and, there, and there have been – no. And, and there – well, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> But there have yeah. been um, there have been no shortage of people making that distinction. There's a clip that was going around for a while. I don't know if it still is, but you can find it. It was a guy named Warren Berger, and he was the chief justice of the Supreme Court in the late 60s. I think Nixon appointed him. And when he retired 30 years later, and he was a Republican. Granted, in the 60s, Republican and Democrat kind of were different things than they are now. Um, but when he retired, and this is the Republican chief justice of the Supreme Court, said that the language of the Second Amendment uh, was never meant to have anything to do with individual gun rights. He called it a fraud on the American people. But that also coincided with, like, the NRA transitioning from a sportsman's organization to a lobbying arm. Um, and so there are a lot of things that were in flux there over the past 50 years but the notion that nothing can change, that, well, this is what it is and we're just going to be held hostage in our own country, that's nonsense too. So I would be lying to you if I thought I even remotely knew what the solution was, but it's certainly – uh, we've certainly haven't tried anything yet. But, but the thing is, So we Alan, can't say anything's failed. What's scarier, an individual with firearms or a group of people with firearms? That's what well regulated? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I'm saying, would you? what would you rather have? One person that you have to deal with that you might have to take down in case something happens or a group? Just to say— I don't understand what you're saying. Like an army? 
Yes, a well-regulated militia. Like, do you? But would, that's the United States. That's the military. But, but I'm. We are not these. These guys are in a cabin and they got a stockpile up to the ceiling. They're not going to take on the military. I mean, I know that that's, that's what like, a militia is. That's their fever dream. But what I'm saying is no. But these domestic terror groups that are in 21st century parlance a militia, they're not regulated. The military is regulated. Yes, th- but- th- this notion that if they could see the future, the framers of the Constitution would have said, yes, of course people should have missile launchers and, and military-grade <laughs> weapons. <A musket. laughs> it's nonsense. Right. I mean, so it's not that people are confused or don't understand what needs to happen. You just have competing ideologies about how to... You know, everybody's kind of got their own. Um, I feel like on both sides, it's all or nothing, and there is. It's no, not. But I the think only they, they are, the only American president to ever suggest taking people's guns was Trump. Obama didn't do it. All these people that think libs are. First of all, I don't know why right wingers think that liberals don't have guns. That is a major, major miscalculation. I don't know why they think they're the only ones with guns. Liberals have guns. Yes, they do. So th- this idea that they're coming to take, that sells a lot of guns. It has been in manufacturers' best interest to purport that nonsense that they're coming to take your guns. It has never happened. It ain't gonna happen. The only one to ever say we should take people's guns and figure it out later is Trump. So... Could he have been joking when he said that? Why would he joke? Mm. If there's a third rail in American politics, if you're a Republican, you don't joke about taking people's guns. Yeah, but those are his people, and clearly they're like, it's that's just Trump. Well, I think- cl- clearly they didn't mind him saying it, but boy, if Obama ever said anything about, hey, we should take a look at this, they wouldn't even let them study gun deaths, and they were all up his ass. So you either believe it or you don't. Like oh this Trump I think they it, it's so easy to discredit Trump and what he says they're like I don't I'm not taking him seriously <laughs> clearly he he's getting money from the NRA well I'm not, I'm not even throwing that out as like a larger picture or if you're pardon the pun indictment of Trump I'm just saying he is the only American president to say that at least yeah. in modern times when we've become because they are right about one thing it's not the gun because that's an inanimate object it's the gun culture that is in this country. No other country has a gun culture. There are only a couple of nations around the world that have gun ownership in their constitutions. Mm-hmm. Mexico does, somebody, maybe Venezuela or something. So, and people go, well, these other countries are a lot smaller. What's your point? Yes, this is a huge country. We have 350 million people, and we have more guns than people in the country. So what's your point? Yes, there is a difference between America and Finland. That is correct. But... To extrapolate the way other countries approach these things, there's nothing wrong with looking. Again, there are no alternatives being looked at because this happens so frequently that you kind of lull people into a sense of defeatism. So you can go on television and say, well, people just need Jesus. And the Jesus people go, yeah, they do. They need Jesus. As kind of an overarching theme, that's what they think. People need more Jesus, irrespective. But that is not any kind of solution to a gun issue. People need Jesus. That's not an answer to anything. And really, that's just them saying people need fear because— Well, the guns will take care of the fear. Right. No, but they're saying they need to be afraid of something, and they want you to be afraid of Jesus because they don't use Jesus as something that's showing love— They use Jesus as a way of saying, you better do this or else you don't get into heaven. There's consequences. So you have to be afraid of God, fear God. But it's also the mindset of people who don't really care about what happens here because this isn't the end. Well, that's the fear. That's The great reward is next. It's not this. It's the next thing. So it doesn't really matter what happens here. Doesn't matter if your mom gets murdered in a shopping mall. Doesn't matter if your kid dies. Doesn't doesn't matter. Because we're all going to be in the warm embrace of the Lord. Well, a lot of people don't believe that. 
And that doesn't make them uh, inferior that they don't believe that. I'm an atheist. There are a lot of, and I don't like radical atheists either. People who will berate yeah, you and skateboards and surfing <laughs> out there hanging ten, eating eating Cool mm. Ranch Doritos, yeah. spicy hot. You know, I mean, I don't know, don't know what the answer is. But the people in charge don't know either. But they're pretending that they do, and for a lot of them, that answer is more Jesus. And so far, I don't see that working out. So, or at least. I'd like to see them maybe point Jesus in a more productive direction. Because these people that are talking about Jesus, they seem really into the Old Testament. They're not into the New Testament stuff. They're not really into the Jesus stuff. They're into, like, the Old Testament God stuff. They're into, mm-hmm. like, you know, punishing the enemies and yeah. the blood of the Lamb. And they they eye love for an that. Eye, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love that stuff. But I don't know, man. Uh, Ken, Hello. Hi, um, this is Ken from Brunswick. I just wanted to say that I don't normally agree with you, but on this subject, I kind of do. Um, I believe that you should definitely have to get some kind of training to own a gun. You shouldn't just be anyone and allowed to, to be able to carry a gun. That's ridiculous. Everything else requires licenses, like driving and things like that. And I know that's supposed to be a privilege, but, you know, it's just common sense. You should definitely have I also a license. Don't, I also don't think that most people who have guns are opposed to that. I think that's I the, think most of that's the, that's honestly, what's so frustrating is I think most people, Ken, who are like you would be like, yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to them doing something along those lines, but I don't know. You're, abso- you're absolutely right. It's just common sense. And I think most people with a brain and a gun would think that. I mean, most of us think that. I don't understand why they're just making it everyone because I th- carry. Because I think that that slippery slope crap has been sold to people for so long that it's almost like kind of baked into their brains where somebody will say something that's a pretty salient explanation and they go, here are the problems, here are some possible solutions. And the one way to shut any conversation down is that's a slippery slope. Slippery slope, which doesn't mean anything, but people go, but people no. know what the phrase means. So they go, oh, yeah, well, slippery slope. But boy, they sure don't care about slippery BS. slope when it comes to free speech or drag brunch or anything like that. That's a slippery slope too. They don't care about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. books and yeah. you know. Okay, thank you, Ken. There's Ken out in Brunswick who usually doesn't agree with me. I would have liked to have delved a little deeper into Probably that. Probably mostly on food stuff, though. <laughs> we don't even know if it's political. Nobody it's agrees with me on food stuff. I understand that. I saw that we are now third in, um, in raspberry production. What the hell is going on? Man, we can't get anything going. Third. Sorry, we're fourth. We've been overtaken at third. Did you know that we were the thir- world's third top raspberry exporter? Everyone knows that. If you're, I didn't know that. I know that. Oh, and I eat a lot of berries, and I didn't know that. Morocco has leapfrogged the United States to become the world's third top raspberry exporter. They're exporting raspberries and blueberries. Man. (sighs) So we're just everywhere we turn. What do you think? um, Let's see. They also are now the third global tomato exporter, overtaking Iran and Spain. Did you know that so many of the world's tomatoes came from Iran? I didn't know that. I don't know who the top raspberry exporter is in the world, but we've been leapfrogged. Or is it leapt frog? Leapt it in what's, frog. What's the, <laughs> what's the tense frog. of that? Leapt, leapt it in frog? Leaped it in. Leaped it in frog? Mm-hmm. Boy, that's that's clunky. English is a tricky language. It really you know? is. It's got a lot of weird rules. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, usually if you uh, 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 read about Moroccan raspberries, it's about uh, Nick Cannon's kid <laughs> making a nasty noise at you. Moroccan raspberry sounds like a crap, <laughs> cap, crapton, a Captain Crunch cereal yeah. in the nineties. They're like, oops, oh, all Moroccan oops, raspberries. All Moroccan raspberries. Yeah. Oh, boy. 
Well, listen, I don't know the last thing that Morocco overtook the United States in. It might have been something of very little consequence. But we're looking at raspberries now. And as a regular raspberry consumer, and if you're like me, you know these things aren't cheap. Uh, so I don't know. As somebody who eats a lot of blueberries and raspberries, I guess I'm contributing to the GDP of Morocco. I don't even know where Morocco is. I'm terrible with geography. I couldn't even tell you where it is. I think it's in Africa. But Northern I'm, Africa. Okay. Underneath so, Europe. Okay. Well, yes, Africa is underneath, below Europe. Directly yes. below, like, Portugal and Spain. Okay. And, yeah. So at least I know the continent it's on. But I, other than that, I would not have known where Morocco is. Pounky's probably got an Airbnb he's ready to go stay at that he found on Zillow. <laughs> If he wanted to go there, because that's like one of those destinations I feel like is on your bucket list. You want to go is, to Morocco? It is, but it's also dangerous. Yeah, it's not like, uh, well, it's funny because all these, I, I can't tell. Uh, I have a friend. Go ahead. I'm you sorry. know, well, no, Saudi Arabia, at least their tourism bureau is like, hey, we want gay people here spending money. But like they cut gay people's heads off and things like that. So you see a lot of Admiral Akbar. See- it's a trap memes going around mm. because, you know. A country is going to have all kinds of wacky ideas, but they also are trying to get people to come and visit because yeah. tourist money is nothing to sneeze at. So, yeah, someone sent me that Saudi Arabia is now open to like gay tourists, even though it goes against like their bylaws. I'm like, uh-uh, I don't trust that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if I would be booking my flight to Riyadh right, right now. Because I have but- a, a friend of mine, one of her really good friends is Egyptian. She's from Egypt. Mm. Like she she moved over here and she goes back every other, you know, every other year. And she's like, "We should go with her." I'm like, "No." She's like, "Well, we have, you know, if we we have someone on the inside. Like it's fine. As long as you know someone, she can tell us where to go and where to avoid." I'm like, "No, I'm not going." She's right in between Israel and like Egypt. Like right in that little uh triangle there. That is like the most dangerous part where they're always fighting and bombing people. I ain't going over there. Nor should you. It's, it's like... Let's go over. No. Just go. No. Come on. It's a super small town where she's from, too. I forget the name they, of it. They want you to go. No, I'm not going. It's a, <laughs> plus, it's like a $3,000 plane ticket. We looked into it. We were going to go, because I'm like, that is a bucket yeah, list. Yeah, it's not cheap to get over there. And I'm like, I might not come back. She's from, like, Safga, Safaga or something like that. Careful. Okay, all right. I mean, you can say it, but... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I'll tell you your word for it. Bill, why are you trying to get Pound Cake to go? Why are you driving so hard to get him to Egypt? Uh, we don't want a little Pound Cake getting hurt. I just want him to experience You things. want me to do the Pound Cake Sports Break Live from yeah. Egypt? Hey, we're in Cairo! I just think it'd be good for him. All just, right. Uh, open up some of his views on the world. You could see the pyramids of Giza, mm-hmm. right? They're not Giza. Pardon me? They're Giza. Are you joking? Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe uh, that. I believe him. I have to go to break. If you want to send a text, 35192. I'll have those clutch tickets for you on the way back if you want to go see them. And you can listen wherever you are on that iHeartRadio app.